Praise God. Good morning. I guess I'm just a morning guy. I, um, <clears throat> really been feeling a little, a little down. Because I, you know, every, uh, Every day when I either go out on this YouTube channel or I talk to another believer, when I try to share with them the things that have been shared with me, most of them don't even understand what I'm talking about, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to share it anyway. The thing I find hard to to deal with, I guess, is, is uh, you know when the word says that the deception shall be so great, nobody believes that. Yet they profess up and down, "Oh, I'm about the word. I'm about the word. It's all about Jesus." The Word tells us that the vast majority of the so-called believers, in the end, will either be cold or lukewarm. Well, I'm not cold. I'm not lukewarm. I'm not deceived. Then God's a liar. The deception would be so great that if it were possible, even the election of grace, the elect, would have been deceived. Why do you suppose he made that comment? I think I've mentioned this before, but I just feel like I need to mention it again. <coughs> Well, I'll think about it. I don't want you to get an answer right away because <laughs> end up falling right back into the same area you were before. I'm not deceived. I'm not lukewarm. I'm not cold. Then God's a liar. I've tried to help you to understand that not all are the election of grace. I've tried to help you to see and understand who the election of grace is by the very word that you claim you believe in and still you refuse to accept the truth. <laughs> this is what makes me feel so sorrowful. This is why I pray Oh, Father, I pray for the eyes, for the church to be awakened. <clears throat> There's really nothing more a person can do. And I realize I got out here a little early. I, I, I do believe I did. But, you know, God's got a, he, God's got a perfect work that he does in us. Way beyond anything you and I could ever figure out. <laughs> he knows exactly when I needed to be out here. And even though I believe to myself I may have gotten here early, I was probably right on time. Because there was things that had to be done in me and through me. Even at this last hour, just before the anointing and the Word of God and the voice of God goes forth. <clears throat> There's always more that can be done in preparation for this hour. Some of it, I suppose, has to do with accepting the fact that uh, the vast majority came against the Lord. The vast majority will come against this ministry. 
same thing. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. If they wouldn't believe me, they're not going to believe you. And I guess that's the part that until you come out and start to come forth, you really don't experience that. So, I guess this is my experience getting, my reckoning, my coming to know the reality of the truth of what I've believed to be true, but now I'm seeing it firsthand. Anybody that isn't saddened by the truth doesn't know the truth. The reason the truth saddens you is because you know and understand that many are called and few are chosen. And that is probably the most devastating thing any believer could possibly come to acknowledge and understand. Many are called, but few are chosen. Oh. <clears throat> the Father knows, and uh, the hearts. My sister uh, Olive Tree put out a video here the other day, and I just got them watching it, and it just, you know. <coughs> what I said to her in a reply, you know, and it, no truer words were ever said than, than what the Lord gave that sister of mine, and she passed it right on, I don't care if it's 2001 or 1995, or, it's the truth, <coughs> but when I posted on her, I told her, I said, you know, all we got to do now is figure out who the humble and the contrite are because everybody believes, everybody who claims the name of Jesus Christ believes they're the humble and contrite. You cannot find anyone who believes they're among the cold or lukewarm. You just can't find them. You can't find anyone who claims the name of Jesus Christ who believes what the Word of God says. You can't find one of them. But they all claim to believe in the Word of God. Look and see what the condition of, uh, of, of the believers, what that condition of the church, what the, condi what the conditions were surrounding the end time. Now, there are many... Among them that claim the name, oh yeah, this is the end, this is the end. But find one of them that believes they're deceived. God says <laughs> that they're all deceived, except for the election of grace. That was the whole point in saying what he said. And on top of that, He's letting us know, my brothers and sisters, that the chosen, the election of grace, all right, who come forth are to help to bring and gather together his wheat. But it's got to be by faith. If it isn't by faith, it isn't going to happen. Amen. If you're all deceived and it's just the election of grace, how many brothers do you think are actually out here on this YouTube channel who are among the chosen, the election of grace? Now, I've mentioned to you before, there's 144,000 of them, and that's what the Word says. <clears throat> I've told you before that I believe that the two feet, one foot in the east and one foot in the west, represents the remnant. Spiritually speaking and naturally speaking. Spiritual Israel and natural Israel. But these are the two set of foot of workmen, footmen, who come at the end. One before tribulations, which is the one that's getting ready to come forth right here, right now. I believe by faith 
Uh, the sons and daughters are going to start rising up and they're going to say the same thing and they're going to see the same thing of what I've been sharing with you. Same revelation. That's how you're going to know it's the truth. Because you're going to see two or more gather together in his name and many waters, the voice, singular voice, my sheep hear my voice and no other shall they follow. So when you start getting the witness of two or more together of the election of grace, who are saying and, and seeing the same vision and speaking the same truth, that's his voice. That the sheep hear, and no other shall they follow. I'm pretty certain that this is all what the Father would have take place as far as I'm concerned because, like I've said, <laughs> God, help us. I've been being brought up into this uh, so that when I the time came, I would make my face as flint in regards to the so-called brethren or those who are still in a rebellious state that refuse correction, which is really what was behind everything <laughs> that was said the other day. Uh, I won't go into details, but the Lord knows. I've n <laughs> I have never falsely accused a brother on this YouTube since the day I come in here. And I don't know. And now we all fall short of the glory of God. We've all made mistakes. We've all sinned. Okay? But at some point in time, amen, Jesus, the Word says, He who has crucified the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, if you know what the flesh is, it's not this physical body. A lot of people get this confused. It's the nature and the character of the spirit of man in darkness. That's the flesh. Hatred, envy, strife. Okay? The fruits of the spirit, kindness, meekness, joy, long-suffering, patience. Okay? Well, I, I just, I, I, I'm learning how to accept whatever it is that they might say, and have my face be as flint. It takes a little teaching, it takes a little learning, and it takes a little hurting and suffering, and, you know, accepting that they just don't see it. Eyes that see not and ears that hear not. So, and now, not anything anybody can do. It's just the way it is. It's an unfortunate truth, <coughs> but nonetheless, it's the truth. And it's the truth we're all going to have to accept. And I think I mentioned this, you know, earlier. I'm sure the Father has in regards to your own family members and, you know, oh. Friends, you know, the Word tells us. They, they might be standing together wherever they're standing together at, all right? But one's going to be taken and the other one isn't, and that's just the way it is, okay? Thank God, it's, I believe it's, I don't know, I just, this idea of not doing any suffering, I, 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 I got to tell you, I, um, I don't know that it's even right for us to expect that we shouldn't have to suffer. I mean, we suffer the chastisements and the judgments of God during our life. We uh, suffer for the unrighteousness 
that we've committed. But when it comes to righteousness, okay, doing what is right, we've got this idea that we just should not have to suffer for doing what is right. Jesus never did no unrighteousness. These brothers that were out there and that were nailed, to, uh, they were crucified, they were, their skin was peeled off of them. I mean, the martyrs of the church were crucified and martyred for righteousness' sake. They didn't, they didn't get crucified because of unrighteousness, of their behaviors, of what they did wrong. They were martyred because of righteousness. They refused to not give up the faith. They refused not Stephen, stoned to death because of the vision he saw. And the words he's, the Father spoke through him. They died for righteousness sake. Crucified for righteousness sake. So I don't know that it's right that we should even expect not to suffer. To some degree, I, I, just, I just don't see it not happening. And in part, I, per, uh, I suppose uh, that's already taken place in, in, in small amounts. I, I don't know to what extent. There's a, a lot of brothers in a, a lot of different lands right now who are, you know, be, who have been martyred and, and perhaps killed for, for preaching the gospel. Now, whether or not they were supposed to be preaching the gospel, where they were supposed to be preaching the gospel, whether or not they were led by the Spirit of God to be there in the first place to do what they were doing, only the Father knows that. I don't know. I want to believe that they were there for the sake of righteousness. That they were there doing the will of the Father. But it doesn't mean that they were. There's a lot of so-called brethren out here doing things they believe are the will of God. The Crusades were believed to be the will of God at the hour that they were doing it. Those people were convinced that the Catholic Church and those bishops were telling them that it was the will of the Father that they go out there and start killing people to take Jerusalem back. Do you believe that was the will of the Father? Do you believe that those that died during the Crusades died for righteousness' sake? When I tell you, when I tell you, when the word tells you that the deception shall be so great that if it were possible, even the elect would have been deceived, who is it that you think he's talking to? The majority of the Christian, so called Christian faith. It's, all except for the election of grace. They're the only ones not deceived. That's why it's so critically important for this witness to begin to come forth so that you'll know of a truth and you begin to hear His voice. So, I have a serious lack of witness. <laughs> but again, the serious lack of witness is all part of the trial of faith, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> if God's going to speak to me like He said He would, He'd let me know what to say and when to say it. If by faith I believe that's what takes place, 
then by God, he's going to get me ready to do that. And no matter what it takes, okay, so that I make my face as flint, and the word goes forth exactly the way he says it. Amen? And when he says it. Up till now, with the exception of what I was given for uh, starting the uh, Access Tucson, because I was really concerned about that, so I went to him, you know, he knew that, and that morning of the day that I was supposed to go down there, I no, actually, I think it was like two or three days earlier, he said to me, so that I would know what to tell them. That I was to tell them that I have been sent to draw you back to God and to gather the wheat into the barn, into his barn. That's what he gave to me two or three days before my first Access uh, Tucson public television uh, program that I've been on. That's what he gave to me. So I was able to share that with them. Because uh, that was very important. I don't know how much, I mean, if you guys know how important that was, but it was very important. Because I had to say something to them at the beginning of that program. And it had to be him that spoke. And that's what he gave me when I woke up that morning, two or three days before the show started. And that's what I told him. So, uh, from then on though, I can tell you, I have not, he has not said anything to me. If he's, when he says something to me, I'm going to know what he says, just like I've always known. He makes it very plain and clear. It's not uh, some, you know, mystical half understanding that we're left to try to figure out for ourselves. It's, it's not prophetic. <clears throat> it's a clearly spoken word, a complete sentence, and a complete understanding of a complete whatever that he's saying. The whole thing. Just very plain and right out there so everybody can know and understand exactly what's being said. No, no little partials, nothing. Just, just like I just said. He speaks openly and plainly to me. And when he does, that's what I'm to repeat back to you. When he does it. So that's how I know. <laughs> I know it's the time to say it when he tells me. That part, <laughs> no problem. Amen, <laughs> Jesus. He says, I'll let you know what to say and when to say it. Well, okay. As soon as he tells me, I say it. <laughs> so... He's just a very great God. Uh, uh, I, I, can't, uh, I can't make others. No, no one can make you believe the Word of God. You have to be the one to believe the Word of God. You have to be able to accept even the things that are true concerning us when you don't really understand why. And I'm talking about the, this deception part. You're going to have to accept that they, you are deceived. You have been deceived. That's what the word tells us, except for the election of grace, everyone else has been deceived to some degree. All have been deceived. Some more than others, but all have been deceived. So, and the vast majority of them are cold or lukewarm. It's a remnant that's getting saved, folks. So I wouldn't be listening and hanging out with the majority. I said this before too, but everybody says it just to just to get you to listen to them, I guess, nowadays. 
It's a popular thing to say. It's the persecuted few. <laughs> Amen, Jesus. I hope I don't come across like that. Father, forgive me. If I should ever cause someone else to feel as though I'm being persecuted. <laughs> I don't think the brethren did that. Okay. Poor old me. Poor old me. Pour me a drink. <laughs> no. They were probably sad. Especially when it was the so-called brethren. But that's how you get to know who's who. Okay. So, amen. I love you. Have a good day. May the Lord bless you and keep you in Yeshua's name. Amen.